love the sound of brass instruments like these trumpets, trombones, and of course, horns. Me too. Now, this music is called Horn Concerto No. 4 by Mozart. Do you think it might be twice as good as his Concerto No. 2? I don't know, but I do think we should probably find out how brass instruments work. Oh, oh. <sighs> yeah, so do I. <laughs> Brass instruments like this trumpet make sounds when the air inside them is made to vibrate. Vibrating air molecules bump into the molecules next to them, which makes them vibrate too. This creates a sound wave which travels through the instrument and comes out of this part, which is called the bell. When a sound wave reaches our ears, we hear the sound. We can imagine what those sound waves look like using this spring. So, uh, Greg, catch one end. <coughs> nice. And if we imagine that the brass instrument is at this end, then as that sets the air vibrating, it starts off the sound wave like this. Oh, yes. Wicked. Look it's at good, that. isn't it? And you can see the vibration travelling all the way along the spring. Check it back. But how do you get the air in the brass instrument to vibrate? It's not as simple as just blowing into it. It's time. <sighs> Still can't do it. When you play a brass instrument properly, this is what your lips look like. In super slow-mo, you can see that your lips have to vibrate, which means they're moving backwards and forwards really quickly. Believe it or not, a player's lips can vibrate over a thousand times a second. It's the player's lips vibrating against the mouthpiece that makes the air in the trumpet vibrate, and this creates the sound waves. But these sound waves don't come directly out of the bell. Instead, they're bounced backwards and forwards, creating what we call a standing wave. Let me show you. Um, right, we've got a rope here, and Greg, can you... That end, brilliant, hold it. Now, what's going to happen is Greg is going to wiggle his end of the rope, it's going to bounce off me, and we should create a standing wave. So go on, start your wiggling. Go on, go on, go on. And there we have it, that is a standing wave. And it's known as a standing wave because the wave doesn't look to be moving, even though we are wiggling the rope. Can I stop yet? Yes, you can. <laughs> Thanks. <sighs> So, what happens is the air inside the instrument is vibrating. That then sets the air outside the instrument vibrating, and the vibrations then move through the air until they reach our ears. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah, loud. And it is loud, because how loud something is, its volume, depends on the size of the vibrations that make up the sound waves. So if I blow hard with more energy, I make bigger vibrations. No. <laughs> And that produces a louder sound. If I can make my lips vibrate more gently, I make smaller vibrations with less energy. So the sound is softer, like this. Yeah, I prefer that. Thought you might. The earliest brass instruments weren't in fact made from brass at all. They were made from shells and animal horns, which is how some of them got their name, horns. Makes sense. Now, modern brass instruments, like this French horn, look a little bit different. Now, one thing you might not have noticed at first glance is they are just really long tubes. They're just curled up really tightly to make them easier to hold and to play. Now, if we were to unwind all the tubing in the French horn, you'd find that it's a whopping five metres long. <laughs> a sound is coming out, but the thing is, a major problem is that it's very difficult to play lots of different notes. What sort of note comes out of your brass instrument depends how much air inside the instrument is vibrating. When lots of air vibrates, it tends to vibrate more slowly, making a lower note. Less air vibrates faster, and we hear a higher pitch note. Now, to prove this, I've put three metal tubes inside these three bottles of coloured water. In this bottle, there's a lot of water. In this one, not so much. And in this one, even less. This means there's more air in this tube, less air in this one, and even less in this third one. So if I blow across the tube with the most air in it, this one, I should make the low note. But if I blow across the tube with the least air in it, this one, I should get a higher note. Should. Mm. 
And if I blow across the middle tube, I should get a note that's somewhere between the two. It worked! It does work. But the trick is to be able to quickly change the amount of air that's vibrating in your instrument. There are several ways to do that on brass instruments. Now, one way is to use something called a slide. And this is how a trombone works. If I stretch the slide out as far as I can, it makes the tube of air longer. And that means a lower pitched note. <laughs> but if I pull it back as far as it will go, then the tube of air gets shorter, which gives a higher pitch note. See? Lovely, yes. Now, different positions on the slide make different lengths of air, which make lots of different notes. Okay, I get it, I get it. Another way of changing the amount of air that's vibrating is to use something called a valve. On an instrument like the trumpet, the player can press three vowels. This is how you play the note C. And to make a higher note like B, you do this. Pressing the vowels means there's less air vibrating and that makes the note higher. Brilliant! Another brass instrument is called a bugle and it has no valves at all. And you can make one from some ordinary plastic piping. So while I finish this off, um, Greg, what else have you found out about brass instruments? Well, they're not all made of brass. The shofar is a Jewish instrument made from the horn of a sheep. It dates back thousands of years and is still used in synagogues all over the world. How's your bugle getting on, friend? I'm almost there, and this is what you do. You take a length of really clean hosepipe, about a metre long, and you've got to wind it round twice, like this. And I've used sticky tape just to hold it in place and stop it from unwinding. Then again, we use a clean hosepipe connector, and we attach that onto one end, and this is going to be the mouthpiece of our bugle. And you just screw that into place like that. Gotcha. And at the other end, you use a funnel, and that is the bell. Easy. Yep. And then you're all done. It's a bugle. That's surprisingly good. It's good, isn't it? And yeah. I've built you one so we can take our place in the orchestra and jam along with Mozart's Horn Concerto number no. four. I'd love to. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.